Hi, it's Sue. Thanks for joining me for today's Bible reading. I am reading for April 17th, and it's 1 Kings 12, 13, and 14 for today. And remember, we, we just finished at the end of David and Solomon's death, both of them, because it kind of happened in short order, where David was old, and then he turned the kingdom over to Solomon, and we had a few um, a few stories about Solomon and then his death. And so now we have the divided kingdom, and we're going to have Rehoboam, Solomon's son, who ends up ruling over Judah in the south, and Jeroboam ruling over Israel in the north with ten tribes. Because of some things Solomon did, God uh, took the kingdom away from Rehoboam and only left him with one. In one place it says one tribe and the other two. You'll see what I mean when we read. But it ends up being Judah and Benjamin only in the south with Rehoboam. So just to reiterate, you're going to end up with Jeroboam, king over Israel in the north with ten tribes, ten of the twelve. And then you're going to have Rehoboam, Solomon's son, down in the south with two tribes, Judah and Benjamin. And Jerusalem is in Judah. Um, so let's get reading here. Chapter 12, verse 1. Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel had come to Shechem to make him king. When, because he was Solomon's son, right? When Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, heard of it, for he was yet in Egypt, where he had fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam lived in Egypt, and they sent and called him. Jeroboam and all the assembly of Israel came and spoke to Rehoboam, saying, Your father made our yoke difficult. Now, therefore, make the hard service of your father and his heavy yoke, which he put on us, lighter, and we will serve you. He said to them, Depart for three days, then come back to me. The people departed. King Rehoboam took counsel with the old men who had stood before Solomon, his father, while he yet lived, saying, What counsel do you give me to answer these people? They replied, If you will be a servant to this people today and will serve them and answer them with good words, then they will be your servants forever. But he abandoned the counsel of the old men, which they had given him, and took counsel with the young men who had grown up with him, who stood before him. He said to them, What counsel do you give that we may answer these people who have spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke that your father put on us lighter. The young men who had grown up with him said to him, Tell these people who spoke to you, saying, Your father made our yoke heavy, but make it lighter to us. Tell them, My little finger is thicker than my father's waist. Now my father burdened you with a heavy yoke, but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam on the third day, as the king asked, saying, Come to me again the third day. The king answered the people roughly and abandoned the counsel of the old men which had given him and spoke to them according to the counsel of the young men, saying, My father made your yoke heavy, but I will add to your yoke. My father chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So the king didn't listen to the people, for it was a thing brought about from Yahweh that he might establish his word, which Yahweh spoke by Ahijah the Silenot to Jeroboam the son of Nebat. When all Israel saw that the king didn't listen to them, the people answered the king, saying, What portion have we in David? We don't have an inheritance with the son of Jesse. To your tents, Israel, now see to your own house, David. So Israel departed to their tents and lived in the cities. Wait. Um, Israel departed to their tents. But as for the children of Israel who lived in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam's son, King, excuse me, then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the men subject to forced labor, and all Israel stoned him to death with stones. King Rehoboam hurried to get himself up to his chariot to flee Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against David's house to this day. When all Israel heard that Jeroboam had returned, they sent and called him to the congregation and made him king over all Israel. There was no one who followed David's house except for the tribe of Judah only. When Rehoboam had come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah and the tribe of Benjamin, 180,000 chosen men who were warriors to fight against the house of Israel to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam, son of Solomon. But the word of God came to Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, Speak to Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and to all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the rest of the people, saying, Yahweh says, You shall not go up or fight against your brothers, the children of Israel. Everyone return to his house, for this thing is from me. So they listened to Yahweh's word and returned and went their way according to Yahweh's word. Then Jeroboam built Shechem 
in the hill country of Ephraim and lived in it, and he went out from there and built Penuel. Jeroboam said in his heart, Now the kingdom will return to David's house. If this people goes up to offer sacrifices in Yahweh's house at Jerusalem, then the heart of the people will turn again to their Lord, even to Rehoboam, king of Judah, and they will kill me in return to Rehoboam, king of Judah. So the king took counsel and made two calves of gold, and he said to them, It is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Look and behold your gods, Israel, which brought you up out of the land of Egypt. He set the one in Bethel and the other in Dan. This thing became a sin, for the people went even as far as Dan to worship before the one there. He made houses of high places and made the priests from among the people who were not of the sons of Levi. So basically he's creating his own his own religion here, his own gods, his own religion, completely outside of what God had commanded. And um, yeah, so um, where did I leave off? <laughs> so he took cancel. He took priests that were not Levi. He ordained a feast in the eighth month on the 15th day of the month, like the feast that is in Judah. And he went up to the altar. He did so in Bethel, sacrificing to the calves that he had made. And he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places that he had made. He went up to the altar, which he had made in Bethel on the 15th day of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised in his own heart. And he ordained a feast for the children of Israel and went up to the altar to burn incense. Behold, a man of God came out of Judah by Yahweh's word to Bethel, and Jeroboam was standing by the altar to burn incense. He cried against the altar by Yahweh's word and said, Altar, altar, Yahweh says, Behold, a son will be born to David's house, Josiah by name. On you he will sacrifice the priests of the high places who burn incense on you, and they will burn men's bones on you. He gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which Yahweh has spoken. Behold, the altar will be split apart, and the ashes that are on it will be poured out. When the king heard the saying of the man of God, which he cried against the altar of Bethel, Jeroboam put out his hand from the altar, saying, Seize him. His hand, which he put out against him, dried up so that he could not draw it back again to himself. The altar was also split apart, and the ashes poured out from the altar, according to the sign which the man of God had given him by Yahweh's word. The king answered the man of God, Now intercede for the favor of Yahweh your God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored to me again. The man of God interceded with Yahweh, and the king's hand was restored to him again and became as it was before. The king said to the man of God, Come home with me and refresh yourself, and I will give you a reward. The man of God said to the king, Even if you gave me half of your house, I would not go with you. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was commanded me by Yahweh's word, saying, You shall eat no bread, drink no water, and don't return by the way you came. So he went another way and didn't return the way he came to Bethel. Now, an old prophet lived in Bethel, and one of his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done in Bethel. They also told their father the words which he had spoken to the king. Their father said to him, Which way did he go? Now his sons had seen which way the man of God went who came from Judah. He said to his sons, Saddle the donkey for me. So they saddled the donkey for him, and he rode on it. He went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. The story, I can't stand reading the story. If you know it, you understand why. Um, if you know anything about this story, any revelation or um, insight or um, principles or aspects about the story, put them in the comments or post some links down there. Um, but this story has always bothered me. <laughs> so let's read. Uh, so he found him sitting under an oak and he said to him, are you the man of God who came from Judah? He said, I am. Then he said to him, come home with me and eat bread. He said, I may not return with you, nor go with you. I will not eat bread or drink with you in this place. For it was said to me by Yahweh's word, you shall eat no bread or drink no water there, and don't turn again to go by the way that you came. He said to him, I also am a prophet as you are. An angel spoke to me by Yahweh's word, saying, bring him back with you into your house, that he may eat bread and drink water. He lied to him. So he went back with him, ate his bread and drank water. As they sat at the table, Yahweh's word came to the prophet and brought him back, and he cried out to the man of God who came from Judah, saying, Yahweh says, because you have been disobedient to Yahweh's mouth and have not kept the commandments which Yahweh your God commanded you, but came back and have eaten bread and drank water in the place of which he said to you, eat no bread and drink no water, your body will not come to the tomb of your fathers. 
After he had eaten bread and after he had drank, he saddled his donkey for the prophet whom he had brought back. When he had gone, a lion met him by the way and killed him. His body was thrown on the path and the donkey stood by it. The lion also stood by the body. Behold, men passed by and saw the body thrown on the path and the lion standing by the body. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet lived. When the prophet who brought him back by the way heard of it, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient to Yahweh's mouth. Therefore Yahweh has delivered him to the lion which has mauled him and slain him, according to Yahweh's word, which he spoke to him. He said to his son, saying, Saddle the donkey for me, and they saddled it. He went and found his body thrown on the path, and the donkey and the lion standing by the body. The lion had not eaten the body, nor mauled the donkey. The prophet took up the body of the man of God, laid it on the donkey, and brought it back. He came to the city of the old prophet to mourn and to bury him. He laid his body in his own grave, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. After he had buried him, he spoke to his son, saying, When I am dead, bury me in the tomb in which the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the saying which he cried by Yahweh's word against the altar in Bethel, and against all the houses of the high places which are in the cities of Samaria, will surely happen. After this thing, Jeroboam didn't return from his evil way, but again made priests of the high places from among all the people, whoever wanted to, and he consecrated him, that there might be priests in the high places. This thing became sin to the house of Jeroboam, even to cut it off and to destroy it from off the surface of the earth. So I'm, I reckon that's the lost tribes of Israel. So feel free to comment if you understand about that. I believe that happened after the Assyrians invaded Israel later on, which we'll see as we read through. Or you can go back and get my videos where we've already read through this a couple of times, both in the one-year Bible and the videos on the Holman Christian Standard Bible. Chapter 14, last chapter. At that time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, became sick. Jeroboam said to his wife, please get up and disguise yourself so that you won't be recognized as Jeroboam's wife. Go to Shiloh or Shiloh. Behold, Ahijah the prophet is there, who said that I would be king over his people. Take this people. Take with you ten loaves of bread, some cakes, and a jar of honey, and go to him. He will tell you what will become of the child. Jeroboam's wife did so, and arose, and went to Shiloh, and came to Ahijah's house. Now Ahijah could not see, for his eyes were set by reason of age. Yahweh said to Ahijah, Behold, Jeroboam's wife is coming to inquire of you concerning her son, for he is sick. Tell her such and such, for it will be when she comes in that she will pretend to be another woman. So when Ahijah heard the sound of her feet as she came in at the door, he said, Come in, Jeroboam's wife. Why do you pretend to be another? For I am sent to you with heavy news. Go tell Jeroboam, Yahweh, the God of Israel, says, Because I exalted you from among the people and made you prince over my people Israel, and tore the kingdom away from David's house and gave it to you. And yet you have not been as my servant David, who kept my commandments and who followed with all his heart to do that which was right in my eyes, but have done evil above all who were before you, and have gone and made for yourself other gods, molten images, to provide me, excuse me, to provoke me to anger, and have cast me behind your back. Therefore, behold, I will bring evil on the house of Jeroboam, and will cut off from Jeroboam everyone who urinates on a wall. He who is shut up and he who is left at large in Israel and will utterly sweep away the house of Jeroboam as a man sweeps away dung until it is all gone. The dogs will eat all who belongs to Jeroboam who dies in the city and the birds of the sky will eat he who dies in the field. For Yahweh has spoken it. Arise therefore and go to your house. When your feet enter into the city, the child will die. All Israel will mourn for him and bury him, for he only of Jeroboam will come to the grave, because in him there is found some good thing toward Yahweh, the God of Israel, in the house of Jeroboam. Moreover, Yahweh will raise up a king for himself over Israel, who will cut off the house of Jeroboam. This is the day. What? Even now. For Yahweh will strike Israel as a reed is shaken in the water, and he will root up Israel out of this good land, which he gave to their fathers, and will scatter them beyond the river, because they have made their Asherah poles, provoking Yahweh to anger. He will give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he had sinned and with which he has made Israel to sin. This is so important. It's showing how much influence and responsibility a leader has for the people and how, how really just subject the people are to their leaders. I know that sounds kind of obvious, but 
here's the principle in the word because it said um, he would give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he has sinned and with which he has made Israel to sin the people. Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Tirzah. As she came to the threshold of the house, the child died. All Israel buried him and mourned for him according to Yahweh's word, which he spoke to his servant, Aja, the prophet. The rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he fought and how he reigned, behold, they are written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. The days which Jeroboam reigned were 22 years. Then he slept with his fathers, and Nadab his son reigned in his place. Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, reigned in Judah. Rehoboam was 41 years old when he began to reign and reigned 17 years in Jerusalem, the city which Yahweh had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. His mother's name was Nema the Ammonite, Tess. Judah did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins, which they committed above all that their fathers had done. For they also built for themselves high places, sacred pillars, and Asherah poles on every high hill and under every green tree. I wonder if I always think of those hills as just being hills, but I bet these were hills that they built, like mounds. <clears throat> there were also sodomites in the land. They did according to the abominations of the nations which Yahweh drove out before the children of Israel. In the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem, and he took away the treasures of Yahweh's house and the treasures of the king's house. He even took away all of it, including the gold shields which Solomon had made. King Rehoboam made shields of brass in their place and committed them to the hands of the captains of the guard who kept the door of the king's house. I wonder if Solomon was watching this from, you know, from his place in eternity. Um, it was so that as often as the king went into Yahweh's house, the guard bore them and brought them back into the guard room. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did, aren't they written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? There was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in David's city. His mother's name was Nema the eminent Abijam, his son, reigned in his place. And that's the end of today's reading. So we're getting ready to go into story after story about these kings of both Israel and Judah. And how they just, they really just were waxing worse and worse. There are some high points in there. There are some points of righteousness and submission to Yahweh, but for the most part, they're terrible. <laughs> so um, so we're going to go into those narratives next. I hope you'll join me. God bless you. Thanks so much for being here. Shalom.